today on News Center, a power outage on campus, MSPR awards, an exhibit at the Kentucky Folk Arts Center, and found out which MSU softball player broke a record. All of this and more today on News Center. Good evening and welcome to News Center. I'm Nate Merritt. And I'm Bonnie Daly. This is your news for April 18th, 2013. Last Monday, three buildings on campus lost power. Aduck, Lappin, and Burt Combs were all affected when a transformer stopped working that supplies power to the three buildings. Electricians were able to get Aduck and Lappin back online, with Aduck losing power once again this morning. Burt Combs has been without power since the initial outage. The reason for the power outage is still unknown, says risk management Harry Gunn. Gunn says the electric box was arcing and is not safe for anyone to be around. Classes in Burke Combs have now been moved online until further notice. Students are asked to log into Blackboard to get updates on their classes. Faculty and staff are also asked to stay out of the building for safety reasons. There will be designated times for entering the building. To find out when the times will be, contact Gunn at h.gunn at moreheadstate.edu. Offices that are located in Burke Combs have been relocated to 102 Lloyd Cassidy. Burke Combs is expected to be back online in about six weeks. Three days after the devastating Boston Marathon bombing, authorities have two potential suspects. Boston investigators, along with the FBI, are currently sorting through hundreds of videos and pictures from the area surrounding the bomb blast to help obtain further information. Investigators are also processing evidence recovered from the crime scene and will be looking at cell phone records for suspicion calls and evidence of remote de detonation. Author authorities have yet to release any images of the potential suspects and neither suspect has been positively identified. An explosion rocked the Texas town of West Wednesday night, resulting in several casualties, injuries, and property damage to the surrounding area. The explosion occurred due to flammable chemicals inside of the West fer fertilizer plant. Rescue workers are currently hard at work in West searching for injured civilians and casualties. Authorities believe that between 5 and 15 people were killed in the blast but stressed that it was an early estimate. At the time, there are more than 160 people injured from the blast and receiving medical attention. A four-block area around the plant is being described as totally decimated. The area contained mostly housing, but also included a middle school and a nursing home. Authorities say that there is no indication that the blast was anything other, other than an industrial accident. Lewis County is set to receive nearly $19,000 in aid to repair damaged roads. The money will be used to make repairs to Straight Fork Road and McDowell's Creek Road. According to the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, $12,100 will be used to repair slides on a Straight Fork while the remaining $6,800 will be used to make McDowell's Creek safer for buses and car travel. Funding comes from the Kentucky Gas Tax Project Fund, which is supplied by Kentucky's fuel tax. The funds are divided among counties and state for road projects for the counties that participate in the tax. Construction on Straight Fork Road also includes a bypass that will connect to a Kentucky Highway 59. Construction is estimated to be completed by November. Former Kentucky basketball player turned politician Richie Farmer will be the subject of a federal grand jury probe. Farmer is facing charges of ethics violations from his tenure as Kentucky's agricultural commissioner. Farmer served two terms as ag commissioner and lost a bid for lieutenant governor in 2011. The Executive Branch Ethics Commission charged Farmer last month 42 ethics violations, including accusations, accusations that Farmer gave jobs to friends, had state employees build a basketball court on his property, and gave state-purchased laptops to family members. If Farmer is found guilty, he could face fines of up to $210,000. Two MSU students won an award at the annual Idea State U competition this weekend in Lexington. Senior Kayla Keaton and junior Beth Richmond received $1,000 for their business plan, Bells of Bluegrass, a high-tech event planning service. The competition featured over 50 participants, six teams of graduate students, and 12 undergraduate teams from seven Kentucky universities. The competition strives to promote Kentucky business and more fully developed business proposals are eligible for larger awards. The Kentucky Cabinet for Economic Development initiated the statewide program and funds the event to support the next generation of Kentucky entrepreneurs. We'll be right back uh, for a quick look at weather with Marky Owens and News Center Notices featuring Octavia Biggs. 
Hi, I'm John. And I'm Steve. Join us in April for a new program on MSU TV featuring artists and their artwork. That's right. We're going to talk with artists about what art means to them and how they do what they do. Poets, painters, songwriters, sculptors, welders, fabricators, weavers, makers, shakers, yes, even bakers of all kinds may join us. So check out Art This in April and tell every artist you know there's a new venue in town and it's called Art This. Eagle Lake is only a short walk away and allows you to escape from everyday life. You can exercise and relieve stress by walking around the lake, or you can just sit back and enjoy the view. Eagle Lake is the perfect place to go to relax, but in the next few months it's going to get even better. So what are you waiting for? Go up to the lake. You know you want to. Yo, why you looking at bags, bro? What you need is a chick magnet. You put me in the room and boom! Chicks. That's what I'm talking about! Hi, welcome back to News Center. I'm Marky Owens. Right now it's been a beautiful day outside, but with really gusty winds. Right now it's fair, but there are some clouds moving across the sky, and the current temperature is 79 degrees. Record temperatures in 1896, it was 88 degrees, so we almost even reached that point today, but not quite. And the low was 15 degrees in 1875, and we were absolutely nowhere near that, which is very good. It's been a very, very beautiful day. Let's take a look at the temperatures. It's 78 degrees in London, 79 in Jackson, 85 in Ashland, 83 in Bowling Green, 82 in Louisville, 81 in the capital, Frankfurt, 80 in Covington, 79 in Lexington. Overall, it's been in the mid to upper 70s and lower 80s. It's been a very warm day outside with those winds gusting through because they're very, very strong, bringing in that incoming cold front that'll be here later tonight. Let's take a look at the first alert defender, courtesy of WKYT. We can see the storm system coming from our northwest. It's going to be here later tonight, bringing strong storms that will weaken by the time they get here later, later, later tonight into tomorrow morning. Let's take a look at the 24-hour planner. It's going to cool down later tonight with the incoming cold front, and storms will be here later tonight. Let's take it to New Center Notices. Welcome to News Center Notices. I'm here with Octavia Biggs. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Good. So you're the director of Little Company. Can you tell me a little bit about the program? Sure. In 2004, Dr. Bob Willenbrink developed the program, and in 2005, they took their first group of students out on tour to schools in eastern Kentucky, basically in the Moorhead State University service region. Yeah, that's good. Um, so what, what program are you guys working on right now? What play? Right now we're doing a play written by Lexington Children's Theater Artistic Director, Miss Vivian Snipes, that is called Mr. E of Imagination, The Tales of Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Sounds interesting. <laughs> it is. It's very, it's a, it's a great show. And the students have worked so hard. Actually, we have two companies that tour with us and one group right now is in Union, Kentucky um, on the far, far west side of the state. <laughs> So when will the show be playing here in Moorhead? Or will they be Our playing? final two performances will be in um, in the Rowan County Arts Center on May 3rd at 6.30 and then we'll have a performance on May 4th at the Weatherby Gym for a group of students that work with TRIO. Okay. What, um, what shows are you anticipating for um, the future? 
Well, August 22nd in the fall semester, we will have two nights of auditions for our show that will be touring next spring. But we're moving our little company show into a main stage production. So the show will be um, opening October 29th and running for a week and then we'll go dormant and then we'll come back a week early before classes start in the fall semester. We'll do some workshops on how to do workshops with high school students and then we'll be on the road. So as far as auditions go, who can, who can take part in that and what are you guys looking for to fill the spots? Well, you, we, you need to be a Moorhead State University student, but you do not have to be a Moorhead State University theater major. Okay. So right now we have a journalism major, a music major, so we're open for anybody. The only, the only thing you need to think about if you're interested in doing the little company, they will be out on the road on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So your class schedule needs to be adjusted accordingly. Okay. Um, so as being a director for the past two years, correct? Mm -hmm. um, what has been your favorite part so far? I love working with the students and developing um, their ideas of what it takes to be a professional theater person. Um, it's a lot of work and I try to instill that on how to work with a professional theater company. Uh, I myself work for Lexington Children's Theater so it's a nice relationship that we're building with them and um, I enjoy that age group and I enjoy having them go into high schools and do the recruiting. I think that's very exciting. Good. So um, does Little Company have um, shows for younger children or is it just college? Well the little the company in the past has done a, a show that is geared towards elementary maybe middle school. This year we've decided to do middle school and high school and kind of do that as a permanent on a permanent basis because the high school students we want to use it as a recruiting tool because so many of the students that are with the little company are freshmen. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, thank you so much for asking me. <laughs> okay. We'll be right back after this break. The Eagle Sports Coaches Show with your host, Jason Blanton, covering all the latest news in Moorhead sports, such as men's basketball with Coach Sean Woods, women's basketball with Coach Tom Hodges, and spring sports, such as baseball with Coach Mike McGuire, and softball with David Williams. So for the latest news with Moorhead Sports, be sure to tune in every Tuesday at 6 p.m. on 96.3 FM, Channel 77 every Wednesday at 6, or on our YouTube channel, YouTube slash MSU Eagle Athletics. Center. I'm Marky Owens. Right now it's currently 79 degrees outside, almost reaching those 80 readings, but not quite. It's pretty fair outside today, but there have been some clouds moving through the sky, accompanying the incoming cold front that will be here later tonight. The humidity is at 47%, and the winds are gusting terribly at, from our south at 18 miles per hour. 
let's take a look at the temperatures. It's 83 in Bowling Green, 82 in Louisville, 78 in London, 79 in Jackson, 85 in Ashland, 79 in Lexington, 81 in Frankfurt, and 80 in Covington. So overall, it's been a very, very warm day with the temperatures pretty mild outside and it's been a beautiful, beautiful day. Let's take a look at the first alert defender, courtesy of WKYT. You can see that cold front coming from our north that will be here later tonight, bringing strong storms, winds, hail, and possibly an isolated tornado. The chances of the tornado being here in Kentucky and Moorhead are very slim to none because the storms will weaken as they move through the bluegrass. Let's take a look at the national radar and you can see this cold front coming all the way from the south all the way to the north and it's very, very sharp. And on the other side of the system, you see a winter storm going on, putting down tons of snow per hour. You can see these clouds accompanying the cold front that are coming in and that have even been coming through today. The temperatures overall have been pretty warm in the eastern part of the country. In the west, it's been a little bit cooler, and in the north, it's definitely been colder, and in the south, it's a little bit warmer. But overall, it's pretty good in the eastern part of the state. Tonight, there will be a chance of storms really late in the evening, probably into tomorrow morning with a low of 42 because of those terrible gusting winds and the cold front accompanying. Tomorrow, it's going to be early storms that will taper off throughout the day as they weaken and into the morning that will bring sunshine and partly clouds with a high of 50. So it's going to be a little bit cooler tomorrow, but it's still going to be warm and still that spring weather. Let's take a look at the five-day forecast. On Friday, it's going to be a high of 50 degrees with a low of 32 degrees with those storms tapering off through the morning into the day. On Saturday, it's going to be partly cloudy with a high of 56 degrees and a low of 34 degrees. A little bit cooler of the weekend, but we're seeing that same trend we have been seeing these past couple of weeks. On Sunday, it'll be a high of 65 degrees and a low of 42 degrees. Warmer than it has been the past couple of days, but it's still a little bit cooler. And throughout the week, it's just going to get warmer and warmer and then cooler and cooler as storm season really kicks off. <laughs> You know what? I wouldn't mind a little bit of cooler weather right now. So. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty hot today. Yeah, keep the electric bill down yeah. just a little bit. Yeah, definitely. And these storms, like last week with that funnel cloud in Montgomery County passing through here, luckily it dissipated, so nothing came about it. But still pretty bad storms and strong winds. Right. Yeah, it's been spring, definitely, and definitely storm season. Yeah, but those flowers are starting to pop up. Yeah, it's finally looking green across the bluegrass. <laughs> Let's take it to Eagle Athletics. During the final round of the TSU Big Blue Intercollegiate on Tuesday, the Moorhead State men's golf team turned a score of 292. They finished the 54-hole tournament with a score of 866, placing them at 7th out of the 14 teams present. Southern Illinois registered a 54-hole total of 847 to win the affair. Lips Combs, Edward Martin, and Tennessee Tech rounded out the top five. Moorhead State returns to action April 25th to 27th at the Ohio Valley Conference Championship in Dixon, Tennessee. The 54-hole event will be played at Greystone Golf Course. The past weekend, freshman Lauren Travowski and sophomore Desmond Bell led their respective track and field teams at the Sea Ray Relays held at the University of Tennessee. Javarski clocked a personal best in the women's 1500 meter run and Bell won his heat in the 800 meter run for his second straight week, turning in a time for a season best. Other members of the track teams clocked their season and personal best. During the last season, the women's team set the six school records and men set four. Both teams will be traveling to Lexington this weekend to take part in a Heart of the Bluegrass Invitational. This Saturday, April 20th, the Moorhead State basketball team, or football team rather, will be kicking off their spring game at 2 p.m. at Javen Stadium. Admission is free, and the 70 students will be on display. In the last two seasons, the Moorhead State has set a 29 school records and led the Pioneer Football League in points, total yards, and passing yards. Since, the la since last March, the team has practiced four days a week and anticipating the season ahead. A softball player beat the standing home run record at Moorhead State University. New Center has more. 
A senior at Moorhead State University broke the latest softball home run record. Amber Riddle explains the reaction of her teammates and herself that day. When I broke it, my um, dugout was like extremely loud, way louder than they normally are. And they were screaming, my teammates were talking about they had chills, and they announced it over the intercom, like I did it at home. So they announced it and everybody's really excited. And I'm just glad I broke it before I get any more weak with my shoulder and not be able to break it, so. Riddle didn't have a specific goal on how many home runs she wanted to hit as a collegiate softball player. I mean, I broke records in high school, so I was expecting to break some in college, but I didn't expect to break this many. I mean, I'm tied right now for most RBIs for the career. Break that one. I set the career home run record for Kentucky in high school at 55. Um, I set the single season record for Moorhead last year with 12 in a single season. And the record was 10 by Rebecca Butler as well. Two years ago, Rebecca Butler had the record for like home runs, for career record. And this year I broke her record with uh, 31, because hers was 30. So, and right now I have 34. So I'm trying to set that as high as I can. Records aren't broken overnight. Riddle started her softball career at a young age. Coaches pitch at like nine. And then I played Little League Baseball with boys until <laughs> I was like 12. <laughs> And then I played like, like intramural league, that kind of deal, until about 14. And then I started travel ball in high school. I played high school softball in seventh grade, and started in seventh grade. So I've been playing since nine. About. I'm going to go ahead and uh, guess C there. I, th I think that they're um, doing pretty good, aren't they? Isn't it A? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's A, but I wouldn't call them a 13 streak losing game good. But, you know, it's, it's okay. They're doing all right. Yeah, let's go ahead and take it to a break after this. <laughs> After two months of the unemployment rate being at its lowest point in the last five years, the rate has increased. The unemployment rate in March rose back to 8% in Kentucky. While the number of people who are employed actually rose, there was a larger increase in those looking for jobs. Throughout March, there was also a drop of employment in the state. The largest losses in employment came in the transportation, trade, and utility sectors, while gains were made in educational and health services. Camden, Camden Carroll Library has been awarded as one of the top 100 social media friendly college and university libraries. LibraryScienceList.com ranked Camden Carroll 73rd out of 442 colleges and university libraries. The staff at LibraryScienceList.com evaluated the libraries based on their innovative ways to use social media platforms, as well as their interaction with students and promotional aspects. 
Sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and several others could earn the library's points toward their ranking. Camden Carroll encourages students to use social media as a way to stay up to date on library information. An art exhibition featuring local pieces is currently on display. News Center's Amara Porter went to the Folk, Kentucky Folk Art Center to see this exhi exhibition firsthand. The Kentucky Folk Art Center is currently hosting an art exhibition solely based on clay sculptures. The exhibit is called The Things We Made and it's an exhibition of um, a diverse range of things made at Lee Clay Products which operated in Clearfield for almost 50 years. The specific exhibition differs from most other exhibitions held at the Folk Art Center by the stories it tells. Well, most of the exhibits we do actually are of self-taught art, but this one, but periodically we'll do exhibits that have to do with um, local history or subjects that are kind of related in some way. And um, this is really a local history exhibition. But it's an exhibition that, that the subject matter, while it's local in nature, it is representative of things that took place in other communities. So it's an American story. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's part of um, the growth and development of this country. It's what went on here during a certain period of history that was part of the kind of industrial growth and economic growth of um, small communities around the country. The Lee Company in Clearfield, Kentucky made clay products but sometimes the workers created their own unique pieces which are what helped shape this exhibition. And it was the way in which people saw the process and were able to you know, take, a, take part in it themselves doing something that was entirely theirs rather than making a product like you know, a piece of clay pipe or um, some of the pottery that was made there that were that were produced on what are, what are called jigger wheels which made them uniform. They were made out of clay but they were made inside of a mold with a contraption that, that basically shaped the piece. Um, so these were individual personal sort of expressions and they weren't, by, weren't done by people who had any training in art. So I mean in that sense that it's folk art. Reporting for News Center, this is Amara Porter. The Things We Made Art Exhibition will be on display until Memorial Day weekend. On April 6th, Moorhead State Public Radio won 19 awards at the 2013 Kentucky Associated Press Broadcasters Awards Banquet. New Center got the scoop. They're just basically awards for different categories uh, of broadcasting excellence. Some can be in features, some can be in hard news, soft news, political coverage. Uh, they can be in a, a gamut of different things, news, sports, what have you. You have to enter, you have to send in samples of your work and then they're judged by some people who are out of state. Uh, they pick a random state, sometimes it's Oregon, sometimes it's Alabama, sometimes it can be Florida or places like that and they'll ask people down there who are professionals to review the work and to sample other people's work and see who's best and go ahead and hand out the appropriate prizes. Moorhead State Public Radio won five first place awards, seven second place, six honorable mentions, and one best of show. And I think it says a lot about our station to win these types of awards. I think it, it talks about the type of dedication we have to the process of doing what we do and to the end result of serving our listeners and also our campus community. And I think it says a lot too about the type of educational experience we provide to the students who won awards because many times they're competing with professionals and they're good enough to beat them. Maraz says that Moorhead State Public Radio has won hundreds of awards. Well, I think they're very important. Again, it represents the type of work that I think that we do in a lot of different areas, not just the ones we want awards in. But I think for the students, it's great for them because they're able to put these things on their resumes, and hopefully it'll help them get a job later on when they graduate. Mraz has won an award for Best Play-by-Play -play in the state and an honorable mention for Best Political Coverage. On behalf of Marky Owens with Weather and Don Young with Sports, I'm Nate Merritt. And I'm Bonnie Daly. Have a great evening.